Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a long time, but we welcome you back to the WEDF Interview Roundtable. This is the voice of WEDF here with a longtime friend. It's uh, Homer, a.k.a. Matt Icorn. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So, uh, as you know, the road to WrestleMania 3 is heating up, and you'll be competing inside the Elimination Chamber against uh, Samoa Joe, Christian, Chris Jericho, Jeff Hardy, and Rob Van Dam, and the winner will take on either Goldberg or Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania 3 for the WEDF Championship, or even Kurt Angle could thrust himself into that title picture. What are your thoughts heading into a match this huge? Well, um, obviously my one thought is that I plan on uh, winning the whole thing and made it, and being a part of that world title match. Uh, I, when I look at the opponents, um, you know, I look at each of them differently, but pretty much the one person that everyone is, is choosing to win is, is the one guy I know the most. So I, I feel pretty confident in my chances. I know how this guy fights. I know what he's capable of. Uh, but even more so, I know how to defeat that. So uh, I, I, I think that people need to start paying attention to me if they're going to pick the winner of this match. That's just the way I feel about it. You're talking about some, uh, Samoa Joe, right? Of course. Samoa Joe's, you know, he's got that streak. Everybody always talks about the streak. Why wouldn't they? Um, but again, like I said, I've had more than, I've had the most experience out of anybody else in that match competing against him. Uh, so I, I know more than anybody else, you know, how he fights, what he's capable of and, and, and all that stuff. So I feel like when it comes to everybody in that match, you know, it's, you know, everybody's going to be looking at this as Samoa Joe versus the world. And, uh, but they shouldn't, they should be looking at everybody in this match. Everybody has equal opportunity in this match. Uh, it's everybody for themselves. Anything is possible inside that structure. And I, f I plan on taking full advantage of that. Well, we'll get on to the next question. Um, the win uh, if you are able to get past the five other superstars, there is a chance that you, uh, well, first off, uh, before we get to that, this is your first Elimination Chamber match you've competed in in WEF. What are your thoughts going into this structure, knowing that careers are ended in an instant in a match this huge? Um, I, I I haven't really thought too much about that, for the main reason that I know that the more that I think about it, the more it's gonna like psych me out. Um, when I go into big situations like this, I usually just keep my cl my head clear. Um, I know that I'm already physically prepared to fight in a match like this. And so as far as mentally, I just keep my head clear. I try not to think about it too much, um, mainly just because um, when I get into the ring, I destroy things. I knock people out. I, I tear them apart. And so I, I would like to think that part of that destruction is is not just the structure, but the people inside of it. And so, I, like I said, I, I just don't think too much about how dangerous it is. And I think then I and I just kind of go into it uh, knowing that I've prepared myself as good as I can. All right. Next question: We're gonna get to the Goldberg versus Daniel Bryan match, and then the Kurt Angle winning the Royal Rumble. Does it matter who you face at WrestleMania three? If you were able to get through this elimination chamber, you know it doesn't matter. But I'd like to think that there are certain people in this whole situation that I think are more deserving of that opportunity. There are certain people that I think I I mean there there are definitely easier matchups here and there. But no, I don't think it matters. I think like I respect the hell out of Goldberg, and I respect the hell out of Kurt Angle. And I know that those guys have very, like, you know, very decorated careers. Uh, but I don't think it's, it matters uh, who I face. I think if I get in that situation, if I get to, if I get in that position where I'm fighting for a world championship on the grandest stage, uh, I'm going to put everything out there and I'm going to be able to become the, the world champion. Well, all three opponents, even though you've, not mention Brian, all three have unique styles that you would be facing off against. 
Kurt Angle with the amateur wrestling. Brian, he'd have to try to out quick, and Goldberg, he'd probably be matching you power for power. Uh, yeah, and I think that what I think that I bring to that is sort of the best of all three. Because you mentioned before with Goldberg, I have that power element. Uh, when it comes to my speed, I don't necessarily match up speed for speed with Daniel Bryan, but for a guy my size, much like we talked about Samoa Joe earlier, I'm deceptively fast. And then there's the the uh, the amateur background. Um, I do have a little bit of experience with that. So um, when it comes to my style, I think that's what makes me so dangerous in the ring is that people can't pick – you know, if people pick one thing to, to exploit, that leaves me with something else to work with. All right, we're going to get to... And I think oh. that's one of the reasons why that's the success. All right. Well, we're going to get to the WDF champion Goldberg, who's affiliated with the corporate authority, and there's the chance that the great force will be revealed at No Way Out. Have you thought about how this possible reveal could impact your career? No. Um, I Up until this point, the Great Force hasn't had any... Um, I haven't had it to be associated with it in any way. Um, and I learned a long time ago that um, if it's none of my business, just to leave it alone. Uh, if it becomes my business, then maybe I'll, I'll start worrying about it. But up until this point, I haven't had a single thought about the Great Force. Who do you think the Great Force could be? Because at No Way Out, it's going to be... Kevin Nash taking on John Cena. Hulk Hogan's the guest referee. Uh, supposedly, I think we're, we're going to hear more of what's happening on Raw. But if Hogan, if a, Nash wins, uh, Great Force will be revealed. But if Nash loses, Hulk's career is over. The career of Hulk Hogan is basically in John Cena's hands. What do you think John Cena's going through right now? Yeah, I don't know. I know John Cena doesn't back down from anything. Um, I'm not sure what he's going through, though. That's a tough thing when someone else's career is in your hands. And Hulk Hogan um, okayed it, too. He basically told Kevin Nash that I'm willing to risk uh, my career to get rid of the Great Force. Because apparently it is a big deal within the WEDF. Yeah, and like I said, you know, I'm I'm paying attention to it. I just don't care. I guess a lot. I don't care nearly as much as I probably should. Um, as far as uh, who I think it is, I don't know. I it might I, it might be someone that like Vince that you know. I mean, that's the obvious choice. So I think I'm just gonna go with Vince. As far as uh, whether or not I think that Hogan is gonna retire, I mean, the guy's been around for. The guy's been around for longer than I've been alive. He's he wrestled. He started wrestling before I was born. So, for, for so personally, I think that if he were to retire, I'd be okay with it. That would mean John Cena versus Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania three wouldn't even happen. If you had a chance to take on Hulk Hogan, what would it be like to face one of the biggest icons in wrestling history? I mean, it would definitely be an honor. Like, as much as I say that the guy should retire, I definitely haven't lost any respect for the guy or his career. And so I would definitely take it seriously. I wouldn't take it lightly. I would I would use it as an opportunity because every, th every time you get in the ring with somebody that big, uh, you know, you can't take it lightly. You have to, you have to understand that people are going to be looking at the match, and so they're going to be looking at you, and you got to take that as seriously as you can. So I would definitely walk into it with like complete focus and and all that and just like my goal would basically be uh you know become hulk hogan popular with that one match all right we'll get to the uh, next question um hulk hogan recently squared off against uh your former boss the chairman of layfield inc jbl and jbl had a losing effort and you've had a little bit of a history with JBL. Um, recently, he was uh, bossing you around, and you kind of knocked him out at, uh, I think it was Bad Blood, after uh, you lost to Ted DiBiase. Uh, what are your 
thoughts on JBL and uh, Layfield Incorporated and how it all fell apart? Well, um, when I joined Layfield Inc., it was the understanding that it was going to be a partnership, that I was going to be, you know, I was going to be the number two, but but Layfield and myself are going to be equals in this. And that's the only reason I ever accepted the position, uh, well, that and the money. But the, 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 equal, the equal partnership was the main reason why I did that. And as soon as things stopped going Layfield's way, the true Layfield came out of, uh, of, you know, all the situations. And, and that's when he started, you know, he, he started trying to boss me around and, and I'm sure that people realize by now that I don't take orders from anybody. So, uh, it just kind of happened. I didn't even, I wasn't planning on knocking him out. Uh, I didn't even think about it when, when people start disrespecting me, uh, that's that's when I start swinging. So uh, as far as why I knocked him out, that's why I did it. You don't disrespect me. And the problem with that is that, um, you know, he was kind of do- doing that with everybody. Like once he stopped getting his way, he started throwing his power around and, and none of us really had, had none of us really liked it. So, uh, there were talks of of with from the you know the other members of the of the Layfield Incorporated. There were talks of 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 stepping away prior to anything ever happening. It just kind of all unfolded in front of everybody. Uh, but base the main reason why I knocked him out is because uh, it's basically it's a it's a thing about respect. You know, you got to respect people that you work around. Uh, you know, well, otherwise, JBO otherwise they, basically, bad things can happen. I'm sorry, I was, just, I was just saying, bad things can happen if you don't. JBO kind of ordered you to take care of his problems more than more so than your problems, and then when you lost to Samoa Joe after you had him beat, and then at Survivor Series, then at Bad Blood, once Ted DiBiase got that upset victory over you, it just seemed like JBL's. Uh, it became all about JBL and his needs rather than anyone else's. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, like I said, we all had reasons for being in the group, and they weren't to give JBL the championship. Like, he was a piece of the puzzle. He wasn't the whole thing. And when he started taking – like, when he started believing that it was all about him – that's when we started having problems with him. Like, and it wasn't just me. It was Otunga had problems with him and McIntyre had problems with him. We all had problems with the guy. And that's sort of like, you know, and like, you, like I said, that, that moment when I knocked him out, that was sort of the last straw. So, uh, do you, so, I mean, if, if there's any, if there's any wonder of, uh, if, if Layfield Inc. is ever going to come back, the answer is no. If you see JBL again, well, what would you do to him? Because I know JBL asked you to help him out against Ted DiBiase a while ago, and you said you wanted no part of it, and then DiBiase decided to assault JBL. And now that DiBiase is the United States champion, him and JBL were having a battle at No Way Out. Do you plan on getting involved in that business, considering you have two rivals there? Or is your focus more on the number one contendership? Uh, you're, you just said it right there. I was about to say, I have my own things to worry about at No Way Out. Uh, and the United States Championship, uh, as much as I loved uh, holding it, is not one of those things. I've moved on from the United States Championship, and I've moved on from Ted DiBiase. Uh, I don't have anything against over Ted DiBiase as far as a competitor, but I also am not his – like, we're not friends – um, that, that business with, with JBL and him is between the two of them. I've got my own issues to worry about with this elimination chamber match. All right. What would you do if you saw JBL again? Well, knowing JBL, he'd probably start running his mouth. So I might have to knock him out again, but that's saying that we know the kind of person that he is. 
I might just have to I might just have to clock him right in the jaw like I did last time. Alright. Now back to this. What are your future plans as a competitor? Is it are you gonna go back to partnering with anyone or are you gonna continue on a singles run? Well, the partnership thing, um for a long time, I, I, I refused to work with other people because I felt like I needed to prove myself as as me. And I did that for a while. So that's sort of – that's one of the reasons why I started working with other people. But then I realized that you, when you're a part of a group, you're as strong as your weakest member. And so the thing that I – the one person that I know that I can trust in WEDF is myself. So as far as my future plans, I'm pretty much going to – to do my thing, I'm going to continue to pursue the world championship. And um, at the end of the day, um, anybody that I get along with or don't get along with, um, it's it's pretty much going to be left in the ring. All right. Uh, another question I have before we get to the last one is uh, recently we've seen John Morrison go a little crazy. And he got involved in your business and your match against Rob Van Dam when he was doing Mrs. Mannerisms, and you knocked him out. What was the deal there? Because he uh, Morrison kind of cost you the match there. Right. I was I was trying to get momentum for the Elimination Chamber match uh, with my with my match against uh, RVD, and I don't know what he was doing there. And, but at the end of the day, like I looked up. And I hear that I lost the match due to disqualification. And then he started taunting me. And you don't you don't taunt an angry bull, basically. You know, you don't you don't piss a bull off and then taunt it. So as soon as I found out that I had lost, I knew right away that it was because of him, because nobody else was out there and and, and I would pretty much saw him attack R V D as soon as he did it and so pretty much I, I, I did the one thing that I knew how to do which was uh, you know to show him that you know if you want to act crazy then act as crazy as you want but do it on your time not on mine why didn't you do anything while RVD was being attacked you just kind of stood there because I'm not friends with RVD RVD has his own issue. If RVD has an issue with John Morrison, then RVD has an issue with John Morrison. But that doesn't mean that they become my issues. I'm not going to jump in and be his friend. I got to look after me first and foremost. So, you know, RVD at the end of the day walked out of that ring. He won that. He he has a win on his on his belt now. He actually walked out of that better than I did. So, I don't know why people are getting on my case for not getting involved not saving RVD's day, the dude got hit with a couple of moves and he got knocked out just like John Morrison did. But he also won a match that he, quite frankly, was losing. All right. Well, speaking of uh, being solo, you're going to be after teaming on Raw against two of your foes in the Elimination Chamber. You'll be teaming with Christian and Chris Jericho taking on RVD, Jeff Hardy, and Samoa Joe in a huge fan tag preview. Uh, what are your plans going into the match, and can you trust Christian, who's a big-time rival, and Chris Jericho, who recently supposedly turned over a new leaf? I can't trust anybody. So as far as how I'm going to handle this match, um, I'm just going to go in there and I'm going like, to beat people up. Um, but I'm mostly going to be observing. I'm going to watch how these other people fight. I've already been watching everything and kind of seeing how people are, uh, when we're all together. Um, but my goal, my goal at the end of the day, isn't necessarily to win this match. My goal is to, uh, be the one stand. Like there's basically at the end of this, there's going to be one guy standing above everyone else. And that's my goal, is to prove that out of these six of us, I'm the one that people should be looking at. I'm the one that people should be fearing. I'm the one that people should be planning around. 
not necessarily one up other, not necessarily one person or the other, but but I'm that guy, and so that's my goal in this tag team match. I'm not gonna show all my tricks. I'm not gonna show all of you know. I'm not gonna go all out in this one match because, quite frankly, winning this match doesn't give me the title opportunity at WrestleMania. Winning the Elimination Chamber does that. So I'm definitely going to beat people up. I'm going to weaken them. I'm going to make sure that when it's all said and done, one person, like I said, stands tall above the rest and is the clear favorite, and that one person is going to be Matt Eichhorn. Do you think about preserving yourself? Yeah, I thought about it, but then I realized I can't trust anybody. I, I can't trust other people when it comes to beating up others. I can only trust myself. All right, one last question before we head out. Will we ever see Matt Eichhorn return to the commentary booth? One day. That is not likely. But nothing is certain. I will. That's all I'm going to say. We still got a long career ahead of you. I wish you best of luck inside the Elimination Chamber. And there's a chance you can be competing at WrestleMania 3 in a very uh, unpredictable title situation. Thanks for joining us on the WEDF Roundtable. And all I have to say is also but.